Go. Anywhere, wherever you want. <laughs> Why'd you run like that? Welcome to the grind. Yo, let's go! Hang on. Hang on. Uh oh, son. You going that way? Come on! Ow! Oh. Agua! <laughs> Hiya! Come here! That! Oh, here! <laughs> A few moments later. Hmm. You're good. Two thousand years later. Oh, off the tree! <laughs> All right, so what is it? it's been like three years, right? Four? It's been four years. So four years since you walked through the front door, which was pretty cool. Like we've told that story many times. And, and then seeing your shrine here, My like shrine. this, like I'm excited because this is the year you're gonna break through. So like capture everything in the moment right now from like the journey to, to walking in here to like now your whole life's about to change. Like what, what are you feeling and, and what, what do you think has really prepared you for this moment? I was kind of asking a lot. I, I mean, you beat cancer no, twice. Saying, but, but you, you had the pandemic in your college career. And 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 now you, you've gone a little bit ups and downs with the Mets, and this is your moment. So it's like, why, why do you think it's taken this long? Like, why do you think now you feel so ready? Uh, I'm going to say, see, I, I, I wouldn't even want to phrase it like that. I'd rather say, this is the most ready I've been. I don't want to say I'm ready, I want to say this is the most ready I've been. Because if that opportunity presents itself, I'll be ready. I'll be the most ready that I've ever been in my life if that opportunity presents itself. So like, up to this point, there's probably some things I wasn't, hmm, I don't even want to word that. Well, how are we gonna capture this moment, dude? Like, this, yeah, but is a, this is a super exciting moment. Like. Like when you got your baseball card. Yeah, but no, this is. I don't think this is the moment to capture. Well, for us, there's still well, a lot let's of work put it this ahead. way: that's for top, for top velocity. Like when you when you break through this year, and all the things that start happening, being a big leaguer, this is going to be. We're we're not going to see you the same way. We're not going to see you uh, see as much. Different. We're not going to see you as often. Probably. <laughs> You're going to be seen different. You're going to be more iconic around here. It's going to be. People are. It's gonna. It's gonna be harder for you to want to come in here because more people are gonna want to actually bother you. Mm. So, I, this is to me. This is the calm before the storm. So, like, how can you capture this moment? Because you're you're gonna be on the other side of this moment, and you're never gonna be able to come back here and actually be honest about the moment. So, like, well, I hope I could be honest about the moment. But it's your life's never gonna be the but same. But it's gonna, yeah. But the the hope is that it's it's a little bit better or different. Well, what could you say? Living, living in the same, like, living in the same, like, tone, attitude, environment, like, energy that I'm at right now is not everything that I know I'm capable of. So, the point is to elevate all of that. And once that happens, you're right, it, you don't really ever come back down. You, well, the goal is to never really come back down. Well, what are you going to miss about this? Because, like I said, you're not going to be able to live this way anymore. 
So what are you gonna miss about this? Model? I feel like it's. Uh, I feel like we talked about it a little bit. It's like it's like time to be a grown up. So that little like that that kind of like little kid perspective doesn't go away, but it's has a little bit less relevance in your life. So what what do you miss? Like, so give me some specifics that you'll miss. <laughs> Not having almost any responsibility outside of, <laughs> you know, just being focusing on my career. Yeah, literally, like, just being a kid. I mean, at some point, you enter, like, the grown-up world and you can't really go back. You can't act like yeah. a kid. Once you step in, like, you start acting like a kid, you get kicked out pretty quick and, like, yeah, it's hard to... I think things will stop being, like, all these great big experiences because you're a big leaguer. That's kind of what you said. Of course, you're going to find way more goals to go above that, but... You know, all these exciting things you had, you know, your first baseball card, your, you know, your first jersey, you know, your, your first time in AAA, like, you know, of course you'll still keep having those experiences, but those were some really pivotal ones because all it was about was, was the yeah, journey was, to the big league. It was, I guess, confirmation of sorts that the what I was doing and the path I was on was correct. So like all those moments were, um, I guess help you build confidence and like kind of help you understand that like you're, you're on the right path. Yeah. So like those moments are cool to acknowledge, but at the same time, like it's, you get to the point where you can't like overly celebrate every time one of those moments happens, I guess. Yeah. Because at some point it's like, hey, this is just part of your life. Like, this shouldn't be some huge celebration every time one little detail happens or you get a little bit further, you accomplish a little bit more. Like, yeah, take a moment to honor it and, and acknowledge how hard you've worked to achieve it. But um, so like, that's how I feel like like with the big leagues. Like, if I get my opportunity this year, the, the point is to not have that be like an overwhelming moment. The point is to, hey, like, I should be doing this. Like, I, I do deserve to be here. I've earned it. I'm but not, you but you know how big that moment is. I mean, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be something that's I probably will never forget. Because um, that's and like what the dream has been since I was a kid is I always wanted to play in the big leagues. So, but but, but it changes. Well, how much you think it'll change you? I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see. What, what I feel like the the the. I mean, the thing you see with some guys is is you see like they just they have a new like confidence to how they walk around mm -hmm. like they're a little bit more like secure in themselves or confident in themselves in their abilities so I mean that, I, I guess that's that goes back to what we were saying before of just like that little kid in you kind of like not die well I mean to a certain extent dies a little bit because you, you're not you're not motivated you're, you're not really like looking at this as like an ego thing or like let me make sure that I'm you know, I, I got to make sure that everybody knows that I'm a little bit better than them, or I got to make sure I'm, other people are acknowledging my status in this process and the on the totem pole. So it's like, once you get there, it's like, all right, well, what am I gonna do? Like, talk crap to all the people below me, or the guys in the minors, or people that I've maybe passed up in my career. So like at that point, yeah. you're just like, look, like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and I'm where I want to be, and well, I don't you're have to you're prove anything. Like I just need to continue to do what I'm doing because it got me here. So you're hoping it doesn't change you. Is what you're Yes, but it's but it changes everyone else around you though. I mean, people the energy, that are yeah, the in, energy in that's the around baseball, baseball probably is. I mean, there's going to be people that do that, but the the goal is to surround yourself with people that aren't going to do that. Like, like I don't want to be around people that are going to be. I mean, and you see it. You see it from from I mean, friends, family, fans. Like, you walk by, they know who you are, and and I'm not even speaking like personally. I'm just guys that I've been around. Like big prospects I've played with, like you see people are just like in awe of them as a person. And, like I think that'd be tough to hang out with those people. Like it's, it'd be tough to be around those people all the time. Like you're you're trying to stay down to earth and humble, and like the last thing you need is to be around people that are constantly like looking at you like you're on this pedestal. Like oh my god, I'm, like always looking up to you. Like I feel like that's gonna change how you interact with other people because. Now you're going to start looking down on everybody because yeah. that's how everybody's well, treating that, you. Well, that's going to be the challenge for you, that it doesn't change you much, you know. I mean, that's a hope. Well, that's why I, 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 don't, I don't believe that that's something I'll do, but I mean. Well, that's why this, mo this moment's happens. all about. This moment's all about that those few expiring minutes or hours or days uh, in here 
before the next time you come back, you're you're dealing from a different perspective. You know? Maybe other people. Yeah. Well, that's I think, good. I think I don't think it'll it'll really affect how I'm going about my work. Well, so if so, like, who do you want to be? Because it'd be cool when you look back to this. Like, who do you want to be uh, as a big leaguer? Like, like, how do you want people to perceive you? Hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's a tough question to entirely answer. Well, you got to think of like yourself watching this in two, three well, years. I mean, from now, yeah, you know? I mean, but the the goal is to be is just to right now the goal is to just be there and experience it. The goal is not really to set up like who your your reputation. Like, yeah, you, you need to have an idea of who you are, but. At the end of the day, I gotta get there first. So I can't really, I don't wanna go too far ahead and, and start thinking about like, hey, I'm trying to establish myself as this guy. It's like, first of all, let me just get there and and like get my feet wet and start to just pitch and, and figure myself out to that last little level. And then from that point, I mean, I'm sure I'll experience plenty of things that'll help me figure out the, the last little pieces. So what could you put out into the universe that um, you know, kind of gives you that little extra boost of energy that you need or that positiveness you need to, to not just get there but to really make an impact? Mm. What could you say to your future self? The, the one that's about, think about it, you're about to take, you're about to debut right I now. I mean, it, I guess it does go back to all this stuff. It's just like, remember what you've been through? Right. Like remember all the things you cancer. Overcome. I remember all the things that pandemic. You know the ups and downs of minor league ball. You didn't have many until maybe this year. Yeah, like this last year was a great um, time for me to learn about myself. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what's the point of going through all this and and struggling and I mean just working as hard as I've had to work to get to where I'm at to just not take it that last step so it's just I mean I guess, I guess if anything that's the thing that you think about of like you're close but like not there yet and it'd be a like disservice to yourself after everything you've been through to not push it to this last little right. level so, like, so what's it gonna feel like, like <sighs> you gotta go to the kid in you what's the <laughs> what's what's little Orzy gonna feel the moment he gets called up honestly it's gonna be awesome for <laughs> no, Honestly, the, the thought is gonna be, I don't know what the thought's gonna be. I wanna say the competitor in me is gonna be like, all right, let's go. Yeah. Like, I can't wait. Like, give me the ball, like, as soon as possible. But there's also gonna be that little kid in you that's like, this is awesome. Yeah. Like, this is like, everything you've worked for. So, like, that moment's gonna be cool for the little kid. The little kid's gonna be like, you think it'll be better than getting drafted? I, mean, I would, I would say so, 100. Yeah, percent right. right. I mean, I think the draft was probably more of a like. I don't want to say it was a shock, but it was more of like, all right, is this even real? Where this process is a little bit more real because you're in professional baseball every day and you're around these guys every day, so it's a little bit easier to like see and understand where the draft is like, you don't know who these pro, pro guys are. Like, I'm sure plenty of kids have, have heard, you know, pro scouts come to the field and be like, hey, we're interested in you, like, absolutely. And then the draft comes around and you, you're not even a thought. Like, they're not drafting you. They're just some area scouts saying something nice about you and they have no intention. So, you, you know, you have the wide spectrum of kids that literally have no chance but think they do. And then the kids that for sure know that they are, like, getting drafted. And, and I was one of those kids that I thought I was on the, like, the lower end of that spectrum of, like, I mean, hopefully it'll happen, but it hasn't been real up to this point, and I have no idea, like, I have no way to kind of check and see if what scouts have been saying is real. Like, I, I, how am I supposed to know if a pro guy is, you know, giving me the runaround or actually being honest? So you kind of sit there and you're like, all right, are they actually going to draft me? Like, is this actually going to happen? Do you, are, am I actually going to get a chance in pro ball? So, like, that's more of like a, I don't know. I feel like that was more of like a shocking experience where this is a little bit more real, I feel like, for sure. 
I've been through. I've been playing professional baseball. I've been around a lot of big leaguers. Uh, I got the, the opportunity to go to big league camp and you know see some of the some future Hall of Famers that I get to play with. Like what? Like that's. Yeah, so like if, if something... So like that moment has already yeah. been a little bit more real, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like that, I've already, I don't want to say I've experienced it because you can't experience it until you've gone through it, obviously. But um, I feel like there's been a couple like precursors that have helped me be ready for that, where it's not so much of like a shock and awe moment, if that makes sense. And do you, do you probably feel like it's a big responsibility too at the same time. So, you know, when you get drafted, like there's no like expectation. Yeah, there's I not guess. many expectations. I guess, I guess, but, but even still, no. Because I feel like the longer you play, I mean, the more you start to realize, like, yeah, you're trying to help the team win, but the best way to help the team win is just, like, handle your business. Mm -hmm. So it stops being about this, hey, I, I have to do this for the team, and it's more about, like, look, like, do it for yourself. And in doing it for yourself, you're going to be there for your teammates. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's probably a better or healthier approach to it, because you're holding yourself accountable, so that at the end of the day, when your time comes, like, you're ready to produce or, or you know help the team win and all right so i guess that's really all you can do i mean you can't I, I mean i could be the number one cheerleader but every time i go into the game i'm not performing the way i want to because i'm so focused on being the cheerleader that i mean that's that's i'm a team guy but it's a disservice to my team because i'm not perform i'm not holding up my my weight i'm not holding my weight is really i guess what i'm trying to say so so if you could pick the ideal stadium to debut in, or the one you would love to debut in, what would it be? Any of them, I don't Any care. Of them. <laughs> you know, I grew up a Cubs fan, so Wrigley Field would be insane. Yeah, but be I insane. think playing my first game in in New York would be insane. Too. I think it would be awesome. Yeah. All right, let's 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 get to work today. Yep. Yeah. You were like out here, you were like, yeah, come up in here. You're like, your arms are a little disconnected. You're like a little too far. Like you were like a little too much like this instead of like, like be a little bit more stacked here. <clears throat> you're still better. swinging that leg. You're still swinging. It's, it's like early, yeah. huh? But also, if I see a guy's trunk swinging hard, that means the front side's swinging hard. Because your trunk reacts to the forces that you're building. Like, keep this a little bit more connected, basically. Like, you're just like reaching out in front, like here. Keep this a little bit more connected to like your movement. Like, stay more athletic with this leg, because right now it's just like reaching out. Yeah, the, on sense? the only reason you would shut something off is to allow something else to pick up. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you're trying to, you're, it's a zero, you're going to, zero to you know a hundred percent of your energy the goal is to get to hundred percent of energy like to, to to pump it into the ball right whatever you can create well it's, then you, then it's like well i have all these avenues to create it where's it coming from if it comes from here it's going to be rotational if it comes from here it's going to be rotational now the trunk's going to show it now the trunk's just going to do the so that's why you go well look i'm going to shut this off but i don't want to lose that potential to get to that energy. So now I have to pick something else up. If because if not, it's a loss of energy. Yeah, get set up like you were. You feel like you're stiff in here though? Like this feels way too stiff. Yeah, this is it shouldn't be that stiff. Yeah, when this relaxed, now you're like, hey, I can move my arms a little bit. So don't be as stiff here. That too. Yeah. That shouldn't be like that tight. And still get your arms up though. Like still get up there. Just be relaxed. Yeah. Now do now be violent with the lower half. How'd that feel? But you you still got Santiago, you got a like a, a hard kick too. You gotta make sure that's not it's like you know, Nolan Ryan back in the day, big leg kick. If he didn't have such a big back leg, he would have literally been like this, you know, and stuck. Like, so if you're gonna do something with your front side, then you really gotta make sure your backside's 
working well. I just, it's sometimes in training good to shut it off to see how well your back leg's your, working. Your next one, do like a slow leg lift and like kind of more of like a slow gather. Like when you go to lift leg, like don't be here and then reach out. Do more of like a, and then go. Yeah. Hasta que yo no consiga esto, hacer esto así, yo no me voy de aquí. No me voy. Me quedo aquí aunque sea hasta las 10 de la noche. Es lo tú o los dos? Los dos. Bueno, si es para mí, yo paro yo a las 6 de la noche. Ajá, ajá. ¿Quién fue hoy el que estaba? Pagó la alarma. ¿Y quién fue el que ayer hizo 310 veces en el squat? Yo hice la misma que tú. Tú hiciste 275. ¿Y te vas? 25. Me jodas. Ya. Yo te estaba así, ¿eh? Ok. 6 de la mañana. Six times. Six times he literally turned over and snoozed it from me. This morning? This morning. Wakes up, eight. Snooze. Well, you saw how hard he lifted yesterday? I was looking at the snooze. Ahí está. I got the intro. Hey, you cow. I did the I mean, I gave up six runs against Chipola after striking out the first two guys of the game and didn't make it out the first inning when I was in junior college. That one. I went six pitches, two punch outs to start the game. And then it literally went double, double, single, home run, home run, double, double, home run, home run, double, single. And then I was pulled and I, I gave up six runs and didn't get out the first inning. And it was after I was like, First three pitches of the game, nasty. Three swings and misses, punch a guy out. I'm like, yeah. Second dude, same thing. Um, second batter, same thing. Three pitches, punch out. And then literally, I'm throwing first pitch sliders in the dirt. They're golfing it down the left field line. Throwing first pitch splitters or backside doubling it. I'm like, I don't know what to do anymore. I, I was like, I'm getting out this inning, and by the time, like, it literally took probably two minutes. Within two minutes, I was out the game. It all happened quick. <laughs> I'm me, he's him. I'm just like that. It's always been that way, always will be. Beast. Oh. Any advantage you can get over him? I need it. He's too big. I'm not supposed to compete with a dude that's 6'8, 265, and crazy athletic for his size, at least. I shouldn't say crazy athletic. Both of us are, I mean, we're above average athleticism, but. What do you mean? It's all love in the fam. We got to get him to the big leagues too. Come on. I mean, mine's still going to be better. <laughs> Every punch out that he gets on a splitter, I get a cut of his paycheck. <sighs> nah, he should be killing it this year. Well, like this beginning process of like just moving right now. Yeah, it's it's more about just just focusing on certain cues and and hammering those home at the beginning before before you try and go full intent. I mean, it's like it's like well, it's it's the same concept as like lifting. Like, why don't you just go in there and try and max bench on your first set? Like, why don't you? Probably gonna get hurt. You're like you're prepping your body to move correctly before you put on. Well, but but that's what I'm saying. You're prepping you're prepping your body to to move correctly before you move at full intent. Whether it be in the weight room, whether it be with a baseball, whether it be with med ball, whatever. So I wanna feel certain cues and feel my body move the way it's supposed to before I just go, all right, let's see how hard I can throw this thing. So move right first. Then as, as, that, as we get the feeling of moving right, now we just pick up the intent. So I'll move a little bit faster and with, try and create a little bit more force as I'm doing it. But the beginning is like, just feel what you need to feel, sequence correctly, don't, but when do you feel like you 
like the line between the two. I mean, a little bit, a little bit, but they work hand in hand. Like if you come up here and you say it doesn't matter where you throw this thing, you just got to throw it as hard as you can, then yeah, you can get out of control and like you can just focus on creating the most amount of power that you can. But obviously that's not, like this is, I'm doing this not to throw a ball as hard as I can in any direction, I'm trying to throw as hard as I can in a very specific direction. So, Right, so, so the purpose of moving correctly at the beginning and not worrying about velo is some of that is command. Because the better you sequence your kinetic chain and, and we, we move mechanically, right, so, we're, so that's, the, the better we move, uh, the better we sequence the kinetic chain and, and move in terms of biomechanics, it will help velocity. But it also help command because we're, if we move correctly with the lower half, we're gonna drive in a very specific direction. Wherever, wherever our lower half drives, we tend to, the trunk is gonna follow. So therefore, if we are focusing on sequencing correctly at the beginning and focusing on, okay, I am trying to throw to a specific location, we're focusing on driving that hip that direction, the trunk is gonna follow, which means the ball is gonna follow, which is the whole, per so the same thing can be said about trying to throw harder as well. The better we sequence and the better we have direction in a sp the specific direction we're trying to throw, the better our velocity is going to be. So yes, they go hand in hand, but that's the thing, if you take one component out, then it, then it doesn't matter. Like if you say it doesn't matter where you throw it, then yeah, I'll probably move a little bit different and I probably won't go the direction I want it to go, but I might throw a little bit harder. But that's not how we, we don't train that way because we're, we're training to play baseball, so. Um, correct. It should be more natural, 100%. 100%. Because like I was saying though, if you, the, yes, as, as, we're, as you're cleaning up mechanically, you're also working on command at the same time. The, the, more, the more repeatable and the, the cleaner and more efficient that our movements are, the easier it will be to be in control. So now we can control what that movement is, which is command. What if, like some people say, this obsession of mechanics is like If that's the approach you take, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. There are people that do it that way, but that's not the, that's, yeah, and there's a lot of people that do it that way and perceive about it, yeah. Right. Yeah, no. I mean, you see it a lot. You see it a lot with guys too, though, where they obsess about mechanics in terms of command or like trying to spin their stuff better as well. Right. So the guys that the guys that I've played with, a lot of them, I mean, a lot of guys don't care about velocity anymore because they either have it or they don't, and they know it. And they're not really worried about that part. They know that they've gotten to this level with the the, abil the ability that they have. So they, if they've been a low 90s guy that just locates really well and throws four pitches for strikes, and they're all really good, that guy tends to focus more on. Okay, maybe if I'm fixing something mechanically, it's because my curveball tilt is a little bit off, or I'm spinning it sideways a little bit. So they're they're not necessarily looking at it going, I want to throw harder. They're looking at it as, how can I get my peak potential out of the pitches that I have? Yeah, but peak in the potential Right. Well, I mean, if you can throw a fastball. If you could spin a, ba a fastball at, at 2300 and it has 19 vert and you throw it 92, or you could th spin a fastball at 2300 with 19 vert and you throw it 97, the one that, that's 97 is probably going to play better. It's probably going to give you a better chance. So, yes, like. But also, too, you try to say pick up your spin on the ball and you have to actually fly something. Correct. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's a handful of guys in the league that are doing that now. I mean, there's a guy throwing a 94 or 95 mile an hour splitter that was like.
that part doesn't, that, that part's kind of irrelevant. Because it's not about the guy that throws the hardest doesn't win, it's the guy that executes the best. I mean, yeah, you can, you can, there's definitely, there's, I mean, you can, but you better be really, really good at what you do. That's the thing, is it's the, the level of difficulty is the reason why people don't do it. Because you literally have to be perfect. You saying if they were trying to play today? Potentially, but also those are the like. I mean, do you really think those guys? I'm thinking about it more as like those guys probably would try and change their game. They, those guys would probably try and throw harder if that's what was going on in the league. Right. The thing was where the league was at is that part didn't matter. I mean, I think that's true. Well, the the. I don't think so. I think the difference is now you get guys that the style of mid of the the throwing mid 80s and still getting guys out. The style is not out. It's just that people are doing it at 93 now. Those guys today won't want to do well, it yeah, because, because everybody wants velocity. I don't well, think no, it's true. I think I don't think they survive. Today. I don't think they survive because there's guys that are doing the exact same thing in terms of movement and location, but they're doing it at 90. Right, right, right. Right. Well, yeah, throwing throwing in the mid 80s is something that you can't really get away with if somebody's. Gonna, like I was saying, you take the fastball that's 97 at 19 vert and 2300 spin over the one that's 93 at 2300 and 19 vert. Yeah, but it's not even it's not even about where the the uh, I don't remember what I was about to say. Um, what did you just say? Whatever you said triggered something, and then I forgot it. Whatever, I just, that debate keeps coming up, and it makes me think that uh, all the pitchers back in the day, like in the 80s, they didn't spend it too well, but it's just, the debate to me is like, I put it in my head. So those guys even they did for the rest of them, yeah, they would come up and put five power back. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, the game's... Oh, well, yeah, because why? it's not about what the actual velo is. It's about that it's faster than what it was before. So it's, it doesn't matter if it, if it used to be the big leagues were 83, 84, and then guys started throwing 88. You take the guy that's 88, why? Not because it's 88, but because it gives the hitter less time to react. So the, the more that that keeps going up, you don't take it because it's 93 and this is 88. You take it because the hitter has less time to react. Right, so the hitter's seen. It's the hitter's at 100% of the hitter's. Right. That's money, huh? Fastball. They were good at the beginning. There was a couple. My bad, I'm a beast is what you're saying. Right. Put it together. More. Right. Yeah, but stay in the legs. Stay leg focused. <laughs> 